Ciao ragazzi! Just a quick intro, like wow, 40,000 followers like at the moment I'm recording, that's crazy. I want to thank you so, so much for following me. I'm so grateful and thank you for your support. Now let's get into the video. Anno Domini 2019, November. I've changed my job. I started a job as a social media manager and uh, for the first time I wasn't working as an artist anymore. A new frenetic Berlin life started and I didn't have time to draw anymore. So it was when I tried to get back at drawing that I realized I was completely, utterly stuck. I realized I was art blocked and I chose to fight it as I could. So what I did to get out of that situation, I put myself as a goal from the 1st of January 2020, yeah, an amazing year, <laughs> to start and draw a bit every day. Like when I could, where I could, and mostly I had to try and not to think about the result, like what would happen in my art, like without judging myself, which is very hard <laughs> in my position. You maybe experienced that as well, but yeah, I had to draw without judging myself. So this everywhere was drawing on public transportation, little breaks at work, in the evenings, in the weekends, literally everywhere I could, like just a sketch, just the draftest sketch I could imagine, just to get out of the being completely stuck and try to not be scared of what would be the result of my work on the paper. Another thing that I did to get me out of the being stuck was to try again uh, to watch tutorials and do art courses, listening to other artist tips. That was all like really, really important for me uh, because it helped me to get out of drawing always the same thing and not being able to get out of that you know, and pass of saying, like, I can't draw this, I can't draw anatomy, I can't draw this, and being scared of what it would end up to. Spoiler, I still can't draw humans, but that's another story. So this is what I've learned from drawing almost every day for an entire year. Number one, always draw from references, especially if you're learning. What I understood, what I learned during this period, and one of the reasons why I was completely completely stuck was that I was always drawing the same thing, the, the same bad anatomy character and with the same facial features and the same ugly, not realistic body. And it was horrible because I didn't know how to get past that. If I drew from my imagination, I would always draw the same thing. So during my research, while trying to understand uh, how to get out of that, I stumbled across a video by Ethan Becker called Always Draw From Reference or something like that. I can link that in the description below. Um, basically, he was saying to always use a reference while drawing that either is another artist or like real life or pictures always draw from that and then mix up what you see and create something new. I thought that was a sensible, you know, a sensible suggestion. So that's exactly what I did. And for a year, I basically almost never draw without a reference. That was like when I was in public transportation, I was drawing like people that would see in front of me, all self-portraits, like my mirror self-portraits that we see in the transportation window. Or I would draw from anatomy reference pictures that you could find on DeviantArt. Or I would draw from other artists. And guys, that helped me so much. Like, I could finally see more, like, new things coming out of my sketchbook. I would see something that is not always the same thing and it was always super motivating. And I learned a lot about anatomy and how the body works, which is something I generally always avoided because it was super hard, but <laughs> you have to do hard things to get better. I am sorry, but that's uh, the truth. Also, my character started having more three-dimensionality and finally have a structure. It definitely helped me. So that's the thing that you should do if you feel stuck with your work. Number two, don't overthink it. When you're drawing, don't overthink what you're doing. For two years, I studied concept art, worked as a background artist. So I like lost touch with my characters. Like. As I said, one of the reasons I was completely stuck was that I was always, always comparing myself to my old drawings, to what I did before when I was more used to draw characters. And 
to other artists as well and everything I could see was what I couldn't do anymore. And if you're stuck in this kind of similar feelings or not feeling good enough, what it got me out was exactly doing that, like forcing myself to scribble every day and scribble like just a bit without thinking, like completely ignoring what the result be. And that helped me to get not only back into the skills that I had before, but I think to get even better at drawing characters that I've ever been. Which is not very good by the way, but I just ignore it. Point number three! Study more. You thought that being out of school meant to stop studying, right? <laughs> Life is always about to study and if you want to be a good artist, you gotta study. I don't do it enough myself, unfortunately, because of time and all that. I would love to do it more, but doing a course about anatomy, doing courses with artists that teach you like fundamentals about coloring, light, whatever you want to learn or background or even learning the exercises that other artists do in their free time or to learn, those are super important because people went already past that point where you are now and you can learn how they did that and how they got the art to the next level. So I think it's super important if you have a mentor, if you have a teacher, a favorite artist, or a course on the line with an artist that can give you feedback on your work. I think those are really good things that can you can do to improve your work. I did that when I was in, uh, in school, in concept art school, and the feedback that my teachers gave me were like incredible. So I'm actually considering right now to do that again with some teachers maybe about character because that's uh, what I would like to draw better and uh, one of my weakest points. I will link down below the resources that I use in this period, like from tutorials from some fellow art tuber tutorials and suggestions. And uh, other resources I would really suggest is like Schoolism. It's like a platform with so many great teachers that are professional Nathan folks and people that even worked at Disney, worked at whatever amazing company you can imagine, and they're really good teachers as well. Another platform I used is 21Draw, which we also is a platform with the professional artists and also artists that are famous online are giving their lessons. And I think they, they have some really nice courses. For example, I'm taking a course to get better at the atmosphering my drawing. Number four. No matter how little time you have, you can always find five minutes a day. This is five. Five minutes a day to draw something. I know you have a family. If you have a, a job that takes you a lot of time or if you're always at school and doing sport, I know, I know it's hard, but if you guys are in the right state of mind and if you know that you can do it, you can do it. You just have a little organization, plan your day. Say like during my lunch break, I will take five minutes of the, those lunch break to just go on my sketchbook, on my iPad or whatever tool that you have and just draw something. Because even if you think it doesn't matter, it actually matters and uh, it also matters to like raise your self-confidence. The more you start to learn and the more you draw, the more you gain confidence in your work. You see that you are actually improving and it's working. This method works because I did it and I was stuck. And I'm not anymore. I hope it helps you as well. Number five, home office gives you more time to draw. So let's just start another pandemic soon. <laughs> so that's what I learned drawing every day or almost every day in a year. So this is a comparison of a drawing that I made in December 2019 and one that I made in December 2020. The difference is quite high. It's not my best work, I have to admit. I'm not satisfied with how the anatomy and the coloring turned out. But I am pretty satisfied by looking at the progression of uh, my work during this year. Because finally this lady has some kind of volume and uh, three-dimensionality. I know it's a bit more realistic than the original cartoon one, but the cartoon one was like very very flat while this one I think this lady is starting to having some nice 3d in her if you know what I mean <laughs> that was it I uh, hope to see you guys soon in my next video bye